Hello and welcome. This is a video guide on how to optimize No Man's Sky. I want to point out the guide will definitely be helpful for high-end systems, but it will boost mid-range and low-end gaming PC systems with much more effectiveness. This guide will show you how to boost the FPS and it will improve game quality and system performance. In turn, this will help fix any lag or FPS drops that you could be experiencing while playing No Man's Sky. We'll go through a few simple steps that show the best settings to apply in Windows as well as in game. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Step one, clean out your shader cache. I cannot stress enough how important this is. This basically cleanses and resets your stored shaders, which are basically tones and textures that your installed games save. Every time there's a new update, more are added on. Shader compiling can cause crashes, stutters, freezes, and even overheating in some cases. It uses extra memory too. Resetting your shader cache should always be the first thing you do before installing a new game or when a new update comes along. Now there's a link in the description for a video that will show you two simple ways on how to easily clean and reset your shader cache. Step two, to ensure you get the most out of your PC whilst you game, I highly advise that you switch off every overlay and background application while you play. Things like Steam, Nvidia GeForce, Xbox Game Bar, Discord, even River Tuna, and any others that could affect the performance while you game. This is mostly for players with low end gaming systems that need all the power they can get, basically. To turn the Steam overlay off, just head into the Steam setting menu, click in game and untick the box that says enable the Steam overlay while in game. To turn off the Nvidia GeForce overlay, open up Nvidia GeForce Experience, click on the settings icon, go to general and switch off the in game overlay. For Xbox Game Bar, using the window search bar, type game mode settings and then click the icon. Once the window is open, navigate to the left side and click Xbox Game Bar. And of course, set it off. Then you navigate back to the left and click on Captures, where you then need to switch off background recording and recorded audio. For Discord, all you need to do is open Settings and on the left select Overlay. You'll then just need to disable the option that says Enable In-Game Overlay. After you've done that, navigate to Advanced and make sure Hardware Acceleration is set to Off as this actually uses GPU power to run Discord. Step 3. In the Windows search bar, type in Game Mode and click the settings icon. Once the window pops up, ensure Game Mode is set to On. For quite some time, there were issues with this particular setting, but Microsoft has now finally fixed it. So basically, if you're running the very latest version of Windows 10, make sure you turn Game Mode On. This will force all your PC resources on the game you're playing and suppresses any background activity from affecting your system while you game. Step number four. Navigate back to Windows search bar, type in graphics settings and click the icon. Now in here, you should see an option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. This needs to be set to on. And if it wasn't, you will need to restart your PC after you turn it on. After you've done that, navigate down to graphics performance preference and you will want to add No Man's Sky to your games list. To do this, you need to find your games directory and add it to the game's launch application. You basically need to find where it is in installed. So open up Steam, go to your library, right click on No Man's Sky, then click on Properties, then click Local Files and then Browse. Click twice and open up the folder named Binaries and then proceed to copy the directory link at the top which is where your game is installed. You can then close Steam. Navigate back to your graphics settings window, click Browse and you'll want to paste the link to the address bar at the top. Then find the application icon for No Man's Sky and simply add it to your graphics list. Finally, click on options, set it to high performance and click save. And then you're done. Step five. Go back to the window search bar once again, type in power plan and click edit power plan. At the very top, click power options and under preferred plans, ensure high performance is selected. 
Step six, if you have multiple screens, I would advise to only have one screen on when you play. If you press the Windows key and P together, you will bring up a menu that lets you select which screens to have on. Step seven, background apps. Simply type settings into Windows search bar and click the icon, then select privacy. On the left menu, scroll down all the way until you see background apps. Then simply switch off, let apps run in the background. Step eight, the Windows Registry Edit. Now this step may look a little daunting, but it really isn't, I promise. Just follow along and you're gonna be 100% just fine. First, just head on over to the Windows search bar. Type in run and hit enter. Once the new window opens up, simply type in reg edit, as you see on screen, and hit enter once again. You're now inside the Windows registry editor. In here, we're going to optimize and tweak a couple of values that will set important Windows registry keys to completely prioritize gaming above all else. This includes your CPU resources. So start off by double clicking H key local machine, then double click software, then find the Microsoft folder and once again double click it. Then scroll down until you find Windows NT and you guessed it, double click that. Then double click the current version folder and finally scroll down until you find the multimedia folder and double click that one. You'll now be seeing a folder called System Profile and I want you to just click that one once. Now to the right, you will see two options inside. One is titled Network Throttling Index and the other is titled System Responsiveness. Starting with Network Throttling, I want you to double click it and delete any any value you see in there and then you proceed to type in eight F's as in FF 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 and this will actually disable network throttling completely, which is extremely beneficial for gaming. Now, once that's done, click OK and exit. Next up, double click on system responsiveness and change the value to zero. This will actually ensure all your CPU resources go towards gaming. And once you've edited the values inside these two registries, head back over to the left and double click on system profile. Then double click on tasks and then click the games folder just once. Head over to the right and double click on GPU priority and set the value data to eight. You then click OK. Next up, double click priority and change the value to six and click OK. Finally, double click on scheduling category and change the value data to high if it wasn't already and click on OK. You have now successfully optimized the Windows registry for gaming. Step number nine, clearing out your temp folder. This is a pretty simple step and it will clear away a huge amount of unnecessary dumped files that are just simply cluttering your machine. Firstly, head down to the Windows search bar and type in percent app data percent and hit enter. Once the window pops up, you will need to ensure that your hidden items are actually showing as this is a hidden folder. To do that, all you need to do is click on view at the top and then tick the box to the right that says hidden items. Once you've done that, click app data on the address bar and you will see a sort of transparent folder called local. Double click on it and then scroll all the way down until you find another transparent folder that's called temp. Once inside here, you'll want to click and drag your mouse to highlight every single file inside the folder. Then just right click on your mouse and select delete. A window will pop up and what you simply need to do is tick the box that says do this for all current items and then click skip and keep doing the same until the process is finished and you're only actually left with the files that are actually being used by your machine inside the folder. Okay, so now we're gonna dive into the game and we're gonna change a couple of things. So the whole point is really to try and maintain as high a graphical quality as we can whilst we can squeeze out the very most amount of FPS and performance from our PCs. So that's exactly what we aim to try and do with this guide. Starting with video options. For window mode, you should always have it set to full screen for best performance. However, borderless window can work well for most games as well. Monitor will be primary, of course. Resolution should also be your native resolution. My monitor is 1080p, so I will set mine to 1080p. But if you're really struggling, lowering the resolution is definitely a good way to improve and boost your FPS. 
With VSync, you should set it off if you have a G-Sync or FreeSync monitor. And of course, set the max FPS to whatever your monitor's rate is. Mine is 144Hz, so it's set to that. But if your monitor doesn't have G-Sync or FreeSync, then setting VSync to triple buffered will reduce screen tearing whilst favoring performance and keeping your FPS to a consistent 60 FPS. When it comes to field of view, the higher the number, the more you'll be able to see on screen, but in turn, the higher the number, the more GPU power you will require. I would say for lower end GPUs, I'd recommend not going above the 75 default value. For mid range, I'd say between 80 and 100. And for the higher end systems, just go ahead and set it to the highest number. Motion blur should absolutely be set to off, or in this case, just turn it all the way down to zero. Vignette and scan lines can be left as enabled, of course. Now we'll go into graphics options. Texture quality should should be either standard or enhanced for lower end machines, high or ultra for mid to high end specs. Animation quality can be at enhanced or high. Shadow and post processing quality should both be set to standard you will see little to no difference in graphical quality, but a big boost to FPS. Volumetric effects should be at standard or enhanced. Terrain tessellation can be set to standard, which actually turns it off completely and gives you a nice boost to FPS and performance. Planet quality can be left at high. Base complexity should be set to enhanced for best performance. For anisotropic filtering, I would suggest either times four or times eight. Anti-aliasing should be at TAA. And finally, for GTAO, I would recommend no higher than enhanced. Now, of course, these settings really depend on your own PC. So definitely play around and see what works best for you and your system. I do really hope the guide helps you in some way or another. If you do have any questions, just pop them in the comment section and I will come back to you. Thank you very much for watching. A goodbye.